Hi, this is a video on the Intel Nook Mini PC. This is the box. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to unbox it, I'm going to show you some measurements, I'm going to install the RAM and SSD, I'm then going to connect it up to a monitor using the Visa bracket system and mouse and keyboard. I'm not going to read all the specs and so on, I'll just tell you which version I'm using. It is the Nook 6i5SYH. Now you can Google the specs. Right, so in the box you get the uh, instruction, you know, the warranty information and all that stuff. You're getting the Visa bracket. Visa means it's an international standard that uh, is a hundred... 10 centimeters or 100 mils squared and it fits onto most monitors and actually some monitors don't have the visa um, uh, brackets fitting here but I always choose a monitor that has it so it's like if you were going to put the monitor on the wall well you can also put the PC the Intel PC onto the back of the monitor so that's quite a clever idea that Intel had so it almost hides the mini PC away so there's the bracket that gives you the direction the unit itself uh, fairly robust it's uh, got a real uh, it's got this uh, alloy casing quite heavy just to give you an idea of the size this is the visa bracket you can see how the nook is completely covered by this bracket so looking at less than 10 centimeters just to give you an idea oh sorry this is 11 and a half oh sorry because that would be the holes would be 10 so the bracket is 12 You're looking at um, 11 by 11 and a half so it's actually not a perfect square and then what you what you also get are the screws for the bracket, you get the power cable. Just open this guy. Right, just to tell you the specs of this thing, this power cable is operating at 19 volts at 3.4 amps and it's a 65 watt power supply and the power supply connects to the back here and while I'm at the back here I'll just show you you've got HDMI, Ethernet, two USB 3's, a display port and two air vents on what would probably be the side uh, or front you've got another two USBs a um, uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack and then on the left, on the other side, you've got an SD card slot and a Kensington lock option to lock the item. Then in the power accessories, you get all the different fittings for the different countries and their different plug configurations. So that means that this is probably a switching power supply could probably 110 to let's just see yeah, 100 or 240 volts so this is for any country really uh, 110 or 240 and these are the different power fittings and I realized that because of the wattage I mean the voltage selector that was available do like that remove that and we're going to slide this one on and there we go plugs in like that so you won't see this box midway it will be where the wall plug is and then here's the cable just with the velcro remove it and you've got a fairly long wire i can actually measure it uh, we're looking at Just do a rough estimate here. Okay, using the measuring tape, we're going 2.35 meters. So this is a fairly long cable 
um, you probably won't need an extension cord. Okay, so now we're going to configure this unit. We'll need to unscrew these four screws here. Screwdriver. Uh, this is actually a, a, a sticker, well, a, a silk screen uh, writing here that says front. So the front is where the 3.5 millimeter jack is. So I'm opening the unit, and when you open it, what is nice immediately you can see these screws do not fall out. There is a plug system which can be unplugged if you want to. I'm going to just leave it like that and I'm going to insert the RAM and I've got an SSD I've got a SATA 3, 6 gigabits per second M2 256 SSD I love these cards from Transcend I, um, I actually find they're very good so I'm just opening the unit and here's the, okay, the instructions and all that, the warranty and that and here's the card itself. Tiny thing. Handle with care. Now, I'm not wearing the anti-static items, but uh, no, no, you can't see the floor. It is a tile floor. I'm wearing rubber. Um, there is very little static in this room. And I'll just put that down there so long. Right. So... There is also space, just to show you, that the th uh, the hard drive the, it can fit over here, the, uh, the small hard drive. So you can put a normal hard drive in there. Right, to connect the SATA card, there's a screw here. Just unscrew it and take it out. And the SATA card gets inserted uh, actually that way around into there's a slot over here so I'll just come close to the camera right and just like that and now we're going to I'm going to screw in the screw to hold it in place So, in my installation, I'm not actually using a 3.5, I mean a 2.5 uh, hard drive. I'm actually just using the SATA card. Now, I'm going to insert the RAM. I'm going to do it the other way, and you can see the pin there. Right, so I had made an error with the RAM. I had DDR3 when the Nook takes actually a DDR4. So I have now got a DDR4 unit, so dim, there we go, and just while uh, we've got this uh, video going, I'll just demonstrate to you the difference in the DDR3 and the DDR4, you can see that the DDR3, uh, the pin out is different, for example, there and there. And it is slightly smaller, the DDR3. The DDR4 is slightly bigger, just to give you an idea. I'm looking at the size of the RAM is 60, 70, 70 mils. And the DDR3 is uh, 66. Alright, so I'm going to pack the DDR3 away. So that's, uh, that was actually a bit of a waste. Okay, so... In order to insert the, DDR, insert the DDR4, you can put two DDRs, uh, two um, uh, pieces of RAM in the Nook. I've got this is an 8 gig, and the spec of it, if you're interested, I've just used the uh, uh, 8 data. It is 2133 megahertz, so it is fairly fast. And 
you wedge it in, comes like almost like a, um, at an angle, and then you seat it, and then you press down. Then these two arms hold it over. If you want to get get it out, you open these arms, and you can see it comes out like a slice there. So I'm putting it back in. There it's in. So now I'm actually done. I've got the um, <coughs> saving drive. I've got the RAM, and I'm not using a hard drive. I'm using the strip here. So I can actually close the unit, which I'm going to do quickly. And I'm going to turn it on and install Windows. Okay, so really important is the monitor that the Nook can feed. You've got display port, which is great, and you've got HDMI. So that means the monitor that you are using must have HDMI available. And in my situation, I in my situation I actually had to go and swap my monitor because that was an old monitor and it didn't have the HDMI. So I forgot one that's now got DVI, which is fine because DVI and HDMI are actually the same. It's just the pins are different. So I just put the the uh, DVI adapter here and I just plug it into my monitor at the back. So the Nook does not have an analog, does not have an analog output. All right, now I'm going to connect the mouse. Got this uh, little Logitech mouse. So I'm going to connect that. Put the dongle on that, and then I got a keyboard. And I really enjoy these Ergo, the Microsoft Ergo keyboard. So I'm going to connect this, and I'm going to need these things in order to set up Windows. So I'll just plug this in. There we go, now I'm going to power it on. Right, now I'm going to just plug in the power cable and I'm going to power it on. I can hear it, I can hear the fans going now. Get a little blue light there. Okay, so what I have is I've got Windows 10 on this USB stick, so I'm just going to install it now, um, switch on this mouse. Right, you just got to enter the product key. Okay, I'm just going to install Windows straight. Right. One of the reasons why I bought this Nook is I like the idea of it fitting on the visa bracket, on the visa uh, spaced uh, spacings there, the visa bracket. So it's going to fit like this. And what we do is we just screw these two screws here, which I'm going to do quickly. One. And the screws have a built-in spacer. As you can see, it's got a profile which allows it to clip into this bracket, visa bracket. So there, so that's how it clips on, and then this just sits at the back there. So it's quite it's quite nice because it hides that away. 
But now this was actually a challenge because here we have a monitor with a visa bracket. The visa spacing. The first thing is not all monitors have this, which means your nook is going to be sitting next to your computer somewhere or maybe at the back. It's not a train smash, but it defeats the point of this whole nice design. The other problem is some monitors have the visa bracket spacing, especially the Dells, but then you have this challenge. Now, let me show you what this challenge is. Here I have a Dell bracket. If I take the monitor and I want to put it on the table, I have to use the visa uh, spacing bracket for this uh, stand. So if your monitor is a Dell, you, you're actually stuck. For example, I'll just go and show you. Here I have a Dell monitor. Can you see the visa bracket is being used by this uh, extension arm? That's fine. But this visa spacing is also for the stand. Which means that for the Dell monitors, here's another one, the nook would not actually fit here. Because the uh, stand here is going to use that spacing. So, and this is my third monitor getting this right. And I've now found this old Philips monitor which allows me to have the visa and the stand is here. The stand doesn't interfere with the visa. So I'm just going to install this visa quickly, this mounting plate. There we go. And then the nook is going to, um, depending on preference, be like that. But now, again, this will be depending on your preference because you could put it that way. Now, you might be saying a preference. Now, remember to switch it on, the button is there. So it might be more beneficial if you're using the nook to have it in a sleep mode. When you power it down, you will uh, use the keyboard to switch it on. Uh, so it'll be in hibernate or sleep. Otherwise, you, so this is the challenge. You'll always have to remember to come and switch it on behind the screen and switch it off behind the screen. So ideally, it would be nice if there was a power button on the screen and those would be the all-in-one computer. So these are some of the limitations of the Nook is that the power button is sitting there um, there's no extension cord or remote power button, so you can use the sleep mode as I've just said. So that's nice, here's the monitor, and all we'll do now is connect the mouse and keyboard, and I'll show you the video of the complete setup. Right, here's the complete setup. To switch it on, as I said, you have to put your hand at the back, or if it was in sleep mode, you could just um, press the space bar or whatever to wake it up, but in mine is uh, shut down, so I'm switching it on, so I'll tell you now. It's on, you can count two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen seconds to log it to log in. So it's fairly rapid. It's uh, as a, it's not the um, magnetic uh, hard drive, and that's it. So that's the, the Nook, just showing you what it looks like at the back there. And thanks for watching.